Here are today's top stories. The latest social weather station survey says that 84% of Filipinos are satisfied with the way democracy works in the Philippines. The PNP is set to talk with officials of schools where the new People's Army is believed to hold recruitment activities. The government plans to limit the carrying capacity of tourist destinations such as Boracay and the second batch of some 400 Filipinos deportees or halau from Malaysia arrive in Zamboanga City. Good day, I'm Pia Rosas Moroto. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. Eighty-four percent of adult Filipinos are satisfied with the way democracy works in the Philippines, according to the latest Social Weather Station survey. The result is six points above the 78% in March 2018, but below the record high 86% in September 2016. The pollster found that 59% of its respondents said democracy is always preferable to any other kind of government, while 20% showed preference to authoritarianism and 19% did not care. Uh, SWS said the September 2018 survey found increases in satisfaction with democracy among committed Democrats, conditional authoritarians, and those who were indifferent. The question on satisfaction in the way democracy works originated from the Eurobarometer surveys and is also in standard use in Latin American and Asian barometer projects, according to SWS. SWS said an average of 56% of Europeans are satisfied with the way democracy works in their country, while only 36% has been reported in Latin America. The war on drugs suffered a setback as five members of the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency were killed while two others were wounded in an ambush by still unidentified perpetrators in the Lano del Sur town of Capay. Chief Superintendent Graciano Mejares of the Police Regional Office in the Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao said the ambush took place along the National Highway around 12 noon. Mihari said the victims were heading home to Marawi City for a drug symposium for drug surrenderees in the Lano del Sur town of Tagalowan II. Mihari said pursuit operations are still ongoing against the perpetrators. The Bureau of Customs has placed two officials under administrative relief pending investigation on the some 23,000 missing sacks of smuggled rice in Zamboanga City. Presidential spokesperson Harry Rockes said, Customs Chief Isidro La Peña ordered the preventive suspension of Port of Zamboanga District Collector Liceo Martinez and Customs Police District Commander Filomeno Salazar. Roque said the incident showed that there is smuggling, that smuggled rice is being sold in the market, and that there are warehouses that are hoarding rice. He said officials of the BOC could be held liable for the missing sacks. To date, 16,000 sacks have been recovered from various privately owned warehouses. Executive Secretary Salvador Medialdea, meanwhile, said through a text message that President Duterte was visibly upset over the missing smuggled rice. The Department of Foreign Affairs has located the Filipino inmate who went missing following a mass jailbreak from the earthquake-damaged prison in Palu, Indonesia. The Philippine Consulate General in Manado said it was able to contact the inmate and that he is safe and in good condition. Consul General Oscar Orsina said the inmate has been staying with a friend near Pitoga Village in Palu since leaving prison following the September 28 earthquake that struck central Sulawesi. Orsina said the Filipino had permission from the warden of the La Paz Penitentiary to seek refuge at his friend's place after the prison wall collapsed due to the earthquake. The inmate is serving a 14-year jail term for an illegal drug case. Orsina said the Filipino is the longest-serving detainee at La Paz, having been in prison for seven years. The consul general said the warden had actually recommended the Filipino convict for parole. The Philippine National Police is set to meet with the schools tagged as recruitment grounds of the New People's Army. The 18 schools were earlier identified as places where the NPA is recruiting for its so-called Red October plot against the president. 
PNP Chief Oscar Albayalde has ordered NCRPO Director Guillermo Elazar to talk with school officials and learn how police can help protect students from the communists. He stressed that the students cannot be blamed for being swayed into believing the NPA. However, the government and the schools must remedy any wrong teachings being fed to the students. Meanwhile, AFP spokesperson Edgar Arevalo clarified that the schools tagged as NPA recruitment grounds are not necessarily branded as communists. Arevalo says parents must be more aware of activities in schools that allegedly indoctrinate communist propaganda. He added that school administrations must also be aware of possible infiltration by the NPA. The PNP Special Investigation Task Group is looking into a personal grudge as the motive behind the killing of Sudipen, La Union Mayor Alexander Buking. Police Senior Superintendent Ermino Tadeo Jr. said they are identifying five persons of interest in the case based on information from witnesses. Herminio said they are likely political or business associates who have a personal grudge on the mayor. The PNP is also ready to provide security to Buking's family. Buking and two others were ambushed and shot dead in Barangay Kadapli in Bangar town last Monday. His wife, Vice Mayor Wendy Joy Buking, survived the incident. Still to come, five mayors accused of being missing during the onslaught of Typhoon Ompong answer the DILG show cause order. These and more when the PNA Newsroom continues. Hi guys! Alamin natin ang towing procedures ng MMDA and ano nga ba ang 5 minutes? Napaka-controversial na 5 minutes. Alamin muna natin kung ano nga ba ang definition ng illegally parked vehicles. Dalawa yan, isang unattended at attended. So unahin muna natin yung attended. If attended by a driver, the illegally parked vehicles will not be towed but a ticket shall be issued by a traffic constable or deputized HPG. Ibig sabihin, kung nandun naman ang may-ari ng sasakyan, hindi ho pwedeng hilahin yan ng ating mga tow trucks. Instead, iniisyuhan lang ho natin sila ng PBR, yung ticket. At sa ticket na yun, wag ho tayong magtaka kung may tatlo na mamarkahan sa ating violator. Una, illegal parking. Pangalawa, obstruction. Pangatlo, disregarding traffic sign. Kung kayo ay nakaparada sa maliwanag na tow away zone. Pangalawa, ito yung uh, usapin na talagang pinag-aawayan ng lahat. Paano kung wala yung driver? Unattended illegally parked vehicles. Ano nga ba ang procedure para sa mga sasakyan na wala ang may-ari? Kapag dumating ang clearing operations team, o ang ating traffic constable na may kasamang tow truck. Ang procedure dyan, hahanapin natin ang may-ari. We will blow the truck's horn five times, then we will repeat it again after a minute. So technically speaking, hindi naman talaga umaabot ng five minutes. But for humanitarian reasons, binibigay natin yon sa ating mga kababayan para magkaroon ng sapat na oras na alisin ang kanilang sasakyan. So now, alam na natin kung ano ang ibig sabihin ng pagpaparada illegally o pagpaparada sa hindi dapat paradahan. Mamaya, ibibigay ko rin sa inyo kung saan pa yung mga lugar na hindi kayo pwedeng magparada para mas maging malinaw sa ating mga motorista. So, the question is, saan nga ba bawal magpark? Ano nga ba ang mga tow-away zones? Yun kasi yung madalas na itinatanong sa atin ng ating mga kababayan at hindi nila alam kung saan sila bawal magparada. Unahin natin ang mga major thoroughfares ng Metro Manila. Kasama dyan ang EDSA, C5, Commonwealth, R10 at Rojas Boulevard. Sa mga nabanggit na stretch, bawal kayong basta-basta magparada ng inyong mga sasakyan. Pangalawa, kasama rin sa mga two-away zones ang mabuhay lanes. We have 17 specified routes from north to south, south to north na listahan ng mabuhay lanes. Medyo madami pero worth it kapag naalala natin kung ano ang mga mabuhay lanes. Lalo na kung yun naman yung mga usual na dinadaanan natin araw-araw.
The Department of Interior and Local Government said five out of 16 mayors have submitted their explanation on why they were absent or missing from their post during the onslaught of Typhoon Ampong last month. Interior OIC Secretary Eduardo Año said the five mayors will face sanctions if there is no justification for their absence. Of the 16 mayors, nine are from Cagayan Valley while seven are from Cordillera Administrative Region. Anya earlier issued a statement directing the mayors to be physically present in their respective local government units to achieve zero casualty. He directed the local officials to inform the DILG of the actions their respective offices have undertaken to ease the effects of the recent calamity. He also gave the mayors five days from receipt of the show cause order to explain the matter. The 11 mayors have sought an extension. Inflation in the national capital region slowed down to 6.3% in September 2018 from the 7% in August. The economic team says these clear signs of easing indicate that inflation will taper off by year-end and go back to the target range by early next year. According to NEDA Undersecretary for Regional Development Adoracion Navarro, the government could impose price ceilings on basic necessities and prime commodities under the President's declaration of a state of calamity in areas affected by Typhoon Ompo. Economic managers reiterated their call for the speedy passage of the bill amending the Agricultural Tarification Act. They also cited some of the proposed measures to reduce the country's overall energy demand through the PUV modernization program. Philippine monetary officials are not worried about the weakening of the peso, which is in line with the sustained growth of the country's imports. To date, the peso has weakened by more than 6% against the greenback and is trading at the 54 level. Banco Central ng Pilipinas Assistant Governor Restituto Cruz said the central bank continues to follow a market-determined exchange rate policy. He said the peso's movement mainly reflects rising demand for foreign exchange as well as dollar debt repayments, prepayments, and outward investments. The peso's current weakness is one of the three growing pains that the Philippines is experiencing as domestic expansion remains robust. The other two include rising inflation and the country's current account deficit. Malacanang has issued several memorandum orders to lower food prices and curb inflation. Meanwhile, the current account deficit remains financiable because of inflows from overseas Filipino workers, tourism, the business process outsourcing sector, high international reserves, and low level of external debt. The Bureau of Customs Subport Office in Dumaguete City reports high revenue collections brought by increased importation of petroleum and other products. Customs collector Fe Lulin Turing said Phil Oil Energy has increased the volume of their imports. Phil Oil, the biggest importer and revenue collections contributor in Negros Oriental, is being charged with excise tax for its importation shipments starting January according to Turing. Phil Oil usually pays over 200 million pesos in taxes in one importation. Turing also credited Dumaguete Coconut Oil for the increase in importation of palm oil in from once every month to thrice a month, although the company is not paying excise taxes. Another key importer, Price Gas, also increased its volume of importation and is paying excise tax for liquefied petroleum gas or LPG. The Philippine government is doing its best to extend assistance to the Halaos or Filipino deportees from Malaysia. These are people who fled to Sabah to seek greener pastures and escape conflicts in the past. More on this from Absabando. Some 398 Filipinos deported by Malaysian authorities for being undocumented aliens arrived in Sambuanga City on board an inter-island boat on September 18. The Halao, as these deportees are colloquially called, formed the second batch after a two-year amnesty given by Malaysia to voluntarily repatriate themselves to the Philippines expired last August 30. Most of the Halao are from Basilan, Sulu, Tawi-Tawi, and the Zamboanga Peninsula. Many of them, especially their parents, fled to Sabah during the start of the Moro Rebellion in the early 1970s. Aside from its convenient geographical proximity, Many Muslims from Sulu believe that Sabah is part of their Sultanate territorial possession. 
A few worked in Sabah as illegals and ended up as victims of trafficking. The Department of Social Welfare and Development said the first batch of halaos arrived in Zamboanga City last September 6. From January to August this year, the DSWD has assisted some 7,000 Sabah deportees. Malaysia acquired sovereignty over Sabah when it became a republic in 1963. A few years ago, the heirs and followers of the Sulu Sultanate staged a violent raid in a futile attempt to retake Sabah and were subsequently arrested, sentenced, and are now in jail. Perhaps sometime in the future, they too will comprise the next batch of halals. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Abs Abando. Up next, the government plans to limit the carrying capacity of tourist destinations such as Boracay. Newly elected barangay and youth leaders in Kidapawan learn about good governance. The PNA Newsroom returns after these reminders. Pangatlo, kailangan din nating isaisip na bawat local government units ay nagsasagawa ng kanilang clearing operations. Kasama na dyan ang pagbabawal sa pagpaparada ng mga sasakyan within 6 meters of any intersection or curve lane. So very important na tandaan yan ng ating mga motorista. Pangalawa, within 4 meters of driveways or entrances to any fire stations, hospitals, or any similar establishments. Hindi naman talaga po pwedeng harangan natin yung mga ganong klase ng establishment. So wag tayong magtaka na kahit wala sila sa major thoroughfare, eh pwede kayong ito. Pangatlo, bawal din kayong magparada within 4 meters of fire hydrants. In case of emergencies, paano natin gagamitin yon kung may mga nakabalagbag na sasakyan? So kahit wala rin sa major thoroughfares, pwede rin kayong ito, lalo na ng mga local tow trucks na nag operate sa inyong lugar. Next, bawal din ang magparada. Very popular to ha. Bawal ang magparada sa sidewalk. Sidewalks are intended for pedestrians. Hindi ito para sa mga sasakyan. So, wag kayong magugulat kung ang MMDA Task Force Special Operations ay bumisita sa inyong lugar at bigla na lang naghataka ng mga sasakyan na nasa sidewalk. Bawal paradahan ng sasakyan ng sidewalk. Let's remember that. Okay, so kung bawal paradahan ng mga sidewalk, basically, bawal din paradahan ang mga pedestrian crosswalks. Doon kasi dumadaan ang ating mga pedestrian, so wag natin harangan. Bawal din paradahan ang ating mga footbridges. Ibig sabihin, yung ating mga pedestrians na bumababa at umaakyat na gumagamit ng mga footbridges dapat clear from any obstruction. So yung mga nabanggit kong lugar ay pwede talaga kayong ito kung magpapatuloy kayo sa pagpapasaway. Lastly, lahat ng mga kalsada na may official mark ng no parking, tow away zone. Bawag natin paradahan. So please bear with us, makipag-cooperate po tayo para maiwasan ang argumento sa kalsada. The national government is planning to set carrying capacity limits in major tourist destinations similar to what is about to be implemented in Boracay. Tourism Secretary Bernadette Romero Puyat said, President Duterte directed the Department of Tourism, DENR and the DILG to check the carrying capacity of all the major tourist destinations. In Boracay, the allowed tourist population is only around 19,000 per day. In terms of rehabilitation, Romulo Puyat said the government's actions in the island will be replicated in other destinations. The interagency group announced the guidelines for tourists, business owners, and residents ahead of Boracay's soft opening on October 26. Big parties such as the annual La Boracay every May as well as gambling and casinos will be banned in the island. Among others, all local ordinances and environmental laws will be strictly enforced. The Department of Health in Bicol is closely monitoring the number of measles cases after recording a 300% increase this year compared to 2017. The DOH recorded 239 cases of measles from January to September this year in the six provinces of Bicol compared to 61 cases in the same period in 2017. 
Six deaths have already been recorded this year. Dr. Manre Isaiah Mancilla, DOH medical officer, said the increase in cases is alarming since measles is a vaccine-preventable disease. Mancilla believed that among the aggravating factors were the recent issues on vaccination that caused parents to lose confidence. Busy schedule of parents and fear of adverse reactions. Mancilla reminded the public that measles immunization is provided by the government for free. The DOH has initiated Basta Wednesday, Barangay Bakuna Day to give the public weekly access to the government health services. The death toll from the recent earthquake that hit Indonesia's Sulawesi Island has reached over 1,400. Indonesian Disaster Management spokesman Sutopo Purwo Nugroho said some 113 people are still missing. More than 2,500 people suffered injuries while over 70,000 had to leave their homes. Sutopo said the death toll is expected to rise further as hundreds remain trapped under the ruins of houses. Meanwhile, electricity has been restored in some areas. Search and rescue operations are ongoing despite poor access to the hardest hit areas. A 7.4 magnitude earthquake struck the central Sulawesi province on September 28, followed by multiple aftershocks and 3.5 meter high tsunami waves. Reigning IPF Junior Bantamweight Champion Jerwin Ancas will make an appearance in the first ever world boxing title fight that will take place in a mixed martial arts card. Anka has as a special guest at One Kingdom of Heroes at the Impact Arena in Bangkok, which will be headlined by the WBC Super Flyweight title bout between title holder Sri Saket Sor Rungvisai of Thailand and challenger Iran Diaz of Mexico. Ankas previously graced the One Heroes of Honor at the Mall of Asia Arena in Pasay last April. Ankahas, who last week settled for a draw with Alejandro Santiago to retain his belt, is being grouped to have his title unified with that of either Sor Rungbisay or reigning WBA champ Khalid Yafai. Analysts say his scheduled appearance could be a hint that everything will lean to a WBC IBF 115 pound unification battle. Youth leaders and barangay officials learned how to become effective public servants in an orientation by the Kitapawan City local government. The new leaders are reminded to perform their respective duties and represent the government properly. Maricor Zapata has the story. Newly elected barangay and youth leaders in Kidapawan got a head start in becoming effective public officials. The local government of Kidapawan is holding a seminar for the youth leaders and village officials to know the essentials of good governance and accountability. The training is dubbed Basic Orientation for the Newly Elected Officials Towards Grassroots Renewal and Empowerment for Accountable and Transparent Barangays. Kidapawan City Mayor Joseph Evangelista and Department of the Interior and Local Government Kidapawan Director Jean Kionisala led the orientation for the first batch of trainees. Training topics include public accountability, decentralization, federalism, barangay administration, development planning, finance budgeting, auditing, procurement, solid waste management, legislation, and the Rangai justice system. Evangelista said empowering local leaders and the youth will help ensure effective and sustained good governance at the grassroots level. At the same time, Kinesala said the DILG is ensuring the president's trust on good government reaches the barangay level. Three batches of village officials are set for the orientation this October. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Maricor Zapata. Let's now check out the weather forecast for Metro Manila and the rest of the country.
Here's another look at today's top stories. The latest social weather station survey says that 84% of Filipinos are satisfied with the way democracy works in the Philippines. The PNP is set to talk with officials of schools where the New People's Army is believed to hold recruitment activities. The government plans to limit the carrying capacity of tourist destinations such as Boracay. And the second batch of some 400 Filipino deportees or halal from Malaysia arrived in Zamboanga City. Thank you for watching another edition of the PNA Newsroom. To check out these and other stories, visit the PNA website or follow the Philippine News Agency on Facebook and Twitter. For more stories about the government and how it serves the Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. And I'd like to greet all the teachers out there as we celebrate today, International Teachers' Day. That's your daily dose of the latest news and information that you need to know from the PNA Newsroom. I'm Pia Rosas Morato. Have a great weekend.